Um, this is just like a uh, video on on uh, doing like overlays on on two two saps taken on the, on the on the same patient at different times. This one is the progress sap, and you can see that uh, we have like head positioning error problems with double mandibles, and uh, the mowers um, have one on top of the other. We're supposed to take the most like, superior mower. This is important because it'll be like cruisal plane that we're going to draw. And I'll go ahead and draw in the, uh, the long axis, so the, probably not important from the overlay standpoint. There we have this. Okay. So I have finished the, the tracing of, um, of progress set and the start set. The start set uh, was a class 3 case with a retroclined uh, lower size up. And I, I just drawn in the like, Terrigo Maxway Fisher uh, as, as a reference. I may also maybe put in a reference like somewhere in here you see something very like distinct and I'll look on the next x-ray and see if that is also distinct and yes it is. So I'll use that as a reference to whatever that is. Okay. Then uh, I'll just mark that progress just so I know what kind of is. The tracing for the start will go on the bottom. And then the later x-ray goes on top. Now, I'm going to going to like I, I then have to match up the SN line at X for, at S for the skeletal um, overlay. I'm having a hard time because I our little light block out here wants to make it move. Is this a non-growing patient? How old was this patient? Somebody tell me. I would, I would, I would expect a non-growing patient. And I'm going to overlay the nose a little bit because sometimes the SM line is not exactly right. And I got the, the, the Terrigo Maxway Fisher. 16. 16, so no. there might have been some growth. Okay. So you can see I've got, I've got, uh, I have some conflicts. I can go uh, strictly with the SM line at S, in which case my nose, you know, I suppose could have grown. Uh, the, the maxilla could have come down a little bit if there was some growth. Um, I could overlay the maxilla, and if I do on the inferior part of the maxilla, then my SM line isn't right, and my nose is pretty close. So you have to decide which way is is the best fit. So officially it's the SM line at S. So let's go back to that. And I can see that the nasion is larger, so I do suspect some growth. I could also look at the cervical vertebra. And uh, the cervical vertebra here on the, on the start uh, is probably uh, stage uh, three or four. And you can see that, that the cervical vertebra are taller on the progress than they were on the start. So I think that there has been growth on this patient during this during this time because these are definitely taller than they are at the start. So we're going to look for growth on this on this patient. So if I put the SM line at S, I see growth at nasion. I see the, the maxilla coming down. I see the mandible down, which could be either a treatment effect, and I see some changes in the nose. Now that would be consistent with growth. So I'm just going to go with the SM line at S for my skeletal overlay. I lay another piece of acetate on top, and I'm going to mark in blue the start. I just lift up the top one. It tells me which one it is. Mm 
Okay. Stay out of view here of the camera, which makes it hard to draw. But. Lift it up whenever you have any doubts. And of course, everybody has to do this for their final exam cases. But I would encourage you to get a habit in the clinic. So. If I am not using it as a reference, like this here, I'm not using it as a reference, I'm not going to draw it in. I only draw in the areas that I use as a reference. Okay, so let me draw in the... Yeah, say, well, wait a minute, how come the mandibles don't match up? Well, because of possibly growth. That's why. The mandible got bigger in this class three case during treatment so, so far. reverse bullet head gear used. Very successful actually. Uh, but I don't see too much change in A point forward. But clinically we saw quite a change. planes and the later one is the most inferior one so I'll go ahead and mark that in red. So the later x-ray is red and the earlier x-ray, whichever that is, in this case the start will be in blue. And uh, SM line at S I also reference that. So I, I want to draw that in. And before I remove it, start. Whatever date that was, 308. Okay, so that if anybody, anybody picks it up, they're going to not mix up the overlays. So, it looks like we have some changes due to growth and treatment effect. And it'd be hard to like distinguish which one was which, unless you know, you know the, um, the actual mechanics that were used and what would happen without treatment. Okay, now I'm gonna make the best fit of the maxilla. And the best part of it is here for the dental overlay would be the inferior of the of the of the palate. So on this one I have a nice fit on the inferior of the palate. And now I can start seeing the effect of the reversible headgear. This is our dental overlay. Best fit of the maxilla. So I definitely referenced this area. And if I see any any like significant change, like I do on this one, I'm going to make a little mark. Looks like she distorted her maxilla. The maxilla was actually distorted on this by her reverse pole headgear in that area at A point. You can see that the whole Next, it'll change shape. Okay. And then we're going to use our use our template, and the upper molar move forward, upper incisor move forward. So she had a tremendous.